How you doing? I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Um, today I just wanted to do a quick video on some of the reasons why I started Alcohol Mastery way back, about four years ago, um, almost four years ago now. Um, when I started out first, it wasn't anything to do with trying to help other people. It was a lot to do with trying to understand myself. I was just undertaking another project at the time. I was doing a lot of writing for different websites and I wanted to experiment with making videos. So I thought I was thinking for sort of what was the ideal way for me to uh, put videos out there to try and um, put some serious information out there, right? But uh, to learn some skills on how I could develop speaking in front of a camera, how I could develop the setup of a camera, all that kind of stuff, you know. Um, so it wasn't really about trying to help anyone to quit drinking. Um, and I thought, you know, just doing a, a regular weekly vlog on that uh, would teach me a lot of those skills. You know, in reality, I was trying to understand myself. Um, I was trying to understand where I was in my life, and where I was going. Um, I felt like on a fundamental level, I was a failure. I felt like I was making so many mistakes in life um, that I was taking one step forward and two step backwards. And it was all of it was to do with drinking alcohol. I mean, it had taken me a long time to come to that conclusion that, um, you know, it was to do with alcohol, that it wasn't to do with uh, my intelligence or it wasn't to do with my work ethic or anything like that because, you know, without alcohol, when I wasn't drinking alcohol, I could work hard, I could think about things, I could get you know, a good string of thoughts going along and um, it was really uh, taking that time to sort of sit down and evaluate things from uh, the perspective of um, just where I was. You know, I've always believed that we have got massive potential. Like human beings have got a huge potential to grow. I believe in the growth mindset. I've always been a, a fairly positive person. Um, the only times that I haven't been positive or have gone against that growth mindset are when I've been sort of coming down off the alcohol or you know when I've been on a binge or one of those just times when um, the alcohol has got the better of me, right? That living lifestyle has got the better of me and that was happening more and more. Um, as I've said in a lot of my videos, the buzz was getting less and the consequences were extending outwards. So they were getting more um, severe as, you know, as, the, as the years went on. So um, to try and balance those two things, to try and balance yourself as an individual who is capable of growth, um, who is, uh, has a positive outlook on life, and yet at the same time, somebody who is self-destructing, who is doing something to themselves on a regular basis, which is to all intents and purposes, a very slow form of suicide. Now, as I said before, I've never looked at alcohol like that before. You know, I always thought about myself as being, um, I'm an Irish guy, I'm a strong guy, I work in a, in a tough industry, I was working in forestry for, for many years. Um, I hung around with guys who were working in forestry or they were working on the roads or, you know, carpenters, bricklayers, all that kind of stuff. You know, these were hard people, you know. My, one of my best mates was a landscape gardener and, you know, despite his drinking, I think he used to smoke more pot than drink, but he was a, he was a very fit guy and I could always, I was always looking up to him and thinking, well, how is he doing that? You know, I'm sort of doing the same physical job as him, but I'm, I've got all this weight on me, you know. Um, and it was because of that fact. He was, he'd was he maybe drink four or five beers and he'd go, whereas I'd drink twice that amount and I'd stay, you know, and I'd have my dinner in the pub. So it was all a lot of um, one thing leading to another, leading to another. And the whole, my whole alcohol drinking lifestyle was, you know, it, it sort of ballooned outwards towards um, bad eating, bad sort of the, the diet in general um, and not getting enough exercise. I mean, when you do a job for a lot of years, your body tends to get a tolerance to it, just the same as you get a tolerance to alcohol. So, you know, after a, a lot of time, your body can sort of get a balance of where it's going to burn energy and where it's going to conserve energy. And, you know, if you're eating a lot of stuff, 
you know, you, you, you're only supposed to be eating two and a half thousand, sort of, that's for me anyway, two and a half to three thousand calories a day for my height and size. Um, and, you know, if I'm exceeding that, not only with the alcohol that I'm drinking, but also with the food that I'm eating, I've got to try and balance it out with a lot more exercise and work alone is not going to do that. And I just wasn't interested in doing any exercise outside work. Once work was finished, I'd spend some time with my son and then I want to go to the pub, you know. As I've also said a lot of times before, one of the biggest areas in my life where I was failing miserably was um, in being that uh, role model of a father that I needed to be for my son. I was a single parent. Um, my wife had died several years before. Um, well, she died when my son was 13. And um, so all through his teenage years, he just had me to, to, to look up to. And, uh, you know, from a lot of aspects, I did a good job. But from a lot of aspects, I didn't. You know, I was, I was um, sort of, a, um, instead of being with him and sort of schooling him and taking him out and doing things with him, uh, I spent so much time in the pub. Um, or drinking, you know, drinking at home with him. So, you know, any any drinking habit is a selfish habit. You're not actually doing it. Even when you're with other people, it's a very inward looking habit. You know, you're drinking, you're the only one that feels the buzz. You're the only one that feels uh, anything from it, you know, and what you're giving out is slowly deteriorating. The drunker you get, you know, the more bullshit that you come out with, you know, so... You know, I can imagine what, what kind of a life it was for, for my son. And I regret that. There's nothing I can do about it now um, except um, moving forward. And that was my whole plan for from day one was to, um, number one, be a good father to my son, you know. And I think I'm achieving that, you know. I think that um, in many different areas of my life, I'm able to be very solid for him now, you know. If he needs any help at all, he's only a telephone call away if he... You know, it's it's just a, a much better, I feel much better about myself for it. Um, another aspect to this is once I started looking around for information about uh, quitting drinking alcohol, both in the days just before I quit drinking and in the early days of quitting drinking, you know, there, there's just nothing there. There was nothing there. There was, there was the AA, there was um, places like, um, there was a lot of forums around, but you know, the information was very mixed. Um, there wasn't a lot of positive stuff out there uh, to say that, you know, you can do this. It was all a mixture of um, the the nightmare of what alcohol can do to you and physically and mentally and how long it's going to take you to get away from alcohol and maybe you won't ever get away from alcohol to that kind of AA preaching where you've got to... Um, sort of call down a higher power to help you, that you can't do it yourself, that it's a disease, that, you know, it's it's um, it's alcoholism. And once an alcoholic, always an alcoholic, and all it takes is for one drink again, and you're back on it. And all this bullshit about the demon drink and all that kind of crap, right? That's all I could find. And I just thought that there has to be something more than that. Now, I, I'd been studying books. I'd been reading a lot of books and listening to a lot of people uh, all my years in the forestry. You know, a lot of the stuff that I used to do was um, was cut in what they call inspection paths. So it was taking, uh, you'd take a forest and you'd cut the branches off the trees from one side to the other and you'd sort of do a crisscross so that uh, a forester could get in and he could inspect the trees. And the, I had to do this on my own, right? There was another guy, but he was sort of um, maybe a half a kilometre or a kilometre away from me, you know. So a lot of the time I'd be listening to um, uh, audio books, you know, self-help audio books and just listen to different speakers talk about different things um, on my iPod, you know. And so, you know, it's a lot of years that I've had just this um, positivity drummed into me and that you're responsible for yourself and that, you know, a lot of stuff about habits and, you know, not so much about habits maybe, but, you know, it was only afterwards that I started reading about habits and uh, habitual behaviour and sort of the penny clicked and the penny dropped. And um, I realised that, you know, drinking was just a habit. And uh, like any other habit, there was a way of um, moving away from the habit, destroying that old habit and then replacing it with something else, you know. And that's where I really started to... Um, get a grip on where I was and 
my own sort of so-called addictions, you know, and I've never really looked back from there. It's all been onwards and upwards, onwards and upwards all the time. And, you know, the more I think about my past, if I'd have learned this stuff years ago and blah de blah yeah, fair enough, you know, I could have been where else, you know, but I'm not, right? I'm here. I'm here where I am now. I'm sort of stood here and I'm getting up ready these uh, lights around me and stuff because I've written another book. So, um, and I've got a video course coming out now in a couple of a couple of weeks time so I'm just getting ready to start filming that and you know like I never would have thought about this if you'd have asked me five years ago where I would be in five years time I wouldn't have said um, here and now where I am now with what I've got what knowledge I've got um, with the progress that I've made in my life I mean up until now during my drinking life I've always made, it's always been that step forward, step forwards, two steps backwards, two steps backwards, you know. Never a progressive, sustained effort going forwards. You know, th there have been periods where I've done it because I've had to do it, right? So there have been periods of my life when my son was born, for instance, I was like, I was like a demon. I was out there working. Um, I didn't drink too much when, when, when uh, he was born. And it was just that newness of the whole thing. But, you know, gradually life gets on to you and sort of the habit, once you're used to doing this as a relaxant and when you're used to bringing in alcohol and using alcohol as, as a tool in whatever shape or form you use it, that becomes a habit in and of itself. You know, it, the alcohol is just a means to an end. It's just the tool that you use in order to get you from A to B, right, from what you want in life so you know how to relax to being unrelaxed from un being unrelaxed to being relaxed that's the only thing that alcohol is and if it wasn't for alcohol once you have that type of mentality you're going to use you're going to find something else to do that if you're looking for something outside of yourself in order to make you relax or something outside of yourself to make you sociable something outside of yourself to help you go to sleep right that something outside of yourself you have to you have to bring it in you know you if it's a pill form or a, um, a liquid form like that then you know the more you rely on it the more you're going to rely on it and it's like a vicious circle you know you you rely on it one day and you forget about trying to learn how to relax in any other way you forget about trying to go to sleep in any other way and eventually you become dependent on this one thing in order to help you to relax or to sleep or to uh, socialize to solve problems to forget whatever it is that you're doing and this is the life of a drinker right this is the life of this type of a drinker right i know loads of people my auntie for instance right my one of my father's aunties actually um she was an occasional drinker and she would drink when somebody important came around like one of her brothers or sisters um, she would drink then she'd have a small little glass of sherry or she'd drink at a celebration you know she'd drink at somebody's birthday she'd drink at a wedding she'd drink at uh, Christmas and it would always be something small you know it would be a celebratory drink right it wouldn't be let's get pissed out of our heads it was always just a small celebratory drink. Uh, so if you're outside of that, if you drink to get drunk, right, then you're using alcohol as a tool to get you from sober to drunk, right? And there was always a reason for that, right? I'm not going to go too much into this here, but, you know, once you're that type of a drinker that you use alcohol as a tool to get you from A to B, it's very, very difficult, almost impossible not to do it. Right, you know, to break that habit. Um, there's a lot of people say, yeah, you can control drinking. You know, there's there's a way of doing this and controlling drinking. But that kind of thinking is a lifetime process. It's something that you have to do, not just for a week or a month or a year, but for the rest of your life, because you always want to go back to the way you were. Right now, I think there's certain people that that. You know, they cop onto themselves at a certain stage in their life and they realise that what they're doing is bullshit and they just want to change, right? And they just stop drinking and they have the occasional drink, right? I was never going to be one of those people, right? 
Um, I saw how much damage alcohol had done to me. I saw how much uh, of an, um, an impeding force alcohol was in my life, right? And I realized that that kind of thinking and linking alcohol or any other drug with that kind of thinking, with that short-term um, gratification or short-term problem solving was always going to lead to crappy life, right? It was always going to lead to long-term consequences. So I take the, the, you know, the, the drink now in order to not think about the problem. But then I don't solve the problem. So a week later, the problem's still there. A month later, the problem's still there. And it's not only still there, it's got worse, right? So once you get into this state, it's very difficult to claw yourself back because you not only have this problem, you've got another problem that you've also put it to one side and another problem that you put onto one side and all these problems accumulate. And not only do the problems themselves accumulate, but each problem accumulates, you know, as it's rolling down the hill, it gathers more and more volume. You know, it just keeps going and keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger until you're just that muddled with the whole thing. Um, along with the muddling of your of your brain because of all the alcohol that's in there and the muddling of your life because of all the alcohol that's in there. And you've got a massive problem on your hands. So for me, alcohol and just that way of thinking that I could solve anything with alcohol, that I needed to relax with alcohol, that I needed alcohol to socialise, that I needed alcohol to sleep, that I needed alcohol to feel like a man, to feel anything, right? That's what I had to get rid of in my life. And that is really what has been driving alcohol mastery all these years, right? Is just to try and teach people that one simple thing that, you know, once you start using alcohol as a tool or any drug as a tool, right? Something outside of yourself to solve a problem that is needs to be solved internally, then you're in big trouble, right? And that's the sort of reason why um, alcohol mastery has lasted so long is because you know I started out talking about this stuff but talking about it from a very narrow perspective of where I was at the time so week one week two week three week four right they were all just weeks where I was talking about my own problems what was happening to me um, what I was trying to figure out um, how I was going forward and I think you know that that helps a lot of people right but in the long term um, this whole thing about changing your lifestyle and has just happened to me gradually, right? And it's it's dawned on me that it's not only the um, the day by day not drinking of the alcohol that has given me a positive effect, but it's the day by day moving away from even thinking about alcohol, right? Even thinking that it has any fucking relevance in my life whatsoever now, right? Because it doesn't. And this is what alcohol mastery is all about. That alcohol is this forced um, cultural bullshit, this forced cultural poison, which is dominating so many people's lives. And they don't even know it. And the more you drink, the more tolerant, not only do you get for the physical alcohol in your body, right? You also get an emotional tolerance for it. You, you start to believe things um, psychologically so you get a psychological tolerance to it and you know we, we've already been born into this thing with a with a cultural tolerance to alcohol you know alcohol is everywhere and people don't bat an eyelid if alcohol was brought out now today right it would be a class a drug right a schedule one drug i think it's called in america right it wouldn't be schedule five or a class e drug i don't know if that's the thing um but it would be at, at the top of the list you know, it would probably be banned from, from everywhere. It would be, I mean, because it's a killer. Three and a half million people every year die from drinking this drug, from taking this alcohol, you know, as a cause of alcohol use. Three and a half million people, right? 200 separate medical conditions are caused by alcohol drinking. And that's terrible, you know, that, that we don't, you know, as a, as a culture... Get up in arms about this, you know. I mean, how many people die from malaria every year? It's not anywhere near three and a half million people anyway. 
So that's the reason why I started Alcohol Mastery. And that's the reason why it's growing and it's growing and it's growing and hopefully it will keep on growing. Hopefully, you know, I can keep this um, momentum going in myself because um, I really feel strongly about this. I think it's, it's, it's just an absolute scourge, not only for the people who are drinking alcohol now, but for the many generations, if we don't do something about this, you know, that are going to sort of come up afterwards. I, you know, our children are going to, you know, go into the same thing. There's more children now starting drinking in their school days than ever before, right? You know, I've talked about this before where adult diseases are now being found in our children. You know, the children shouldn't be getting these things, you know, diabetes, adult onset diabetes. You know, and this has got disastrous effects for the child's life as he, he grows older. And, you know, a lot of children are not going to grow older because of this, you know. And, you know, we have such a blasé attitude towards this fucking evil drug, you know. And, you know, I don't mean it like from the perspective of the drug itself is evil, right? It's not. It's just a substance, right? But that whole thinking, this cultural um, misconception, this cultural um, brainwashing that we are passing down to our children and it's going to continue to be passed down to our children so long as the alcohol companies, the drug companies are allowed to carry on the way they are. I mean, hopefully now it's going to go the way of cigarettes, right? There's, you know, it'll start coming out where you have to put warnings on the side of bottles. You have to come out with plain labels on the side of bottles and that's going to put a severe dent into um, the marketing and the brainwashing of alcohol companies. But it's not happening as we speak. I mean, there is certain restrictions coming on uh, where and how they can advertise. You know, they're not allowed to advertise, for instance, with uh, children's programs, but they're allowed to advertise in sport, which, you know, like, as anyone knows, um, children are involved in sport as well as, as, well as adults. So, you know, the, the reach of these companies is huge. So anyway, look, I'm going to finish it there. I just thought I'd do a quick video on why I started Alcohol Mastery and really what my motivation is for keeping going forward. So if you have any questions about that, if you have any comments at all, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, leave a comment down below. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. If you're over on the website, then please sign up for the newsletter. It's, um, you can get either a daily newsletter or if you just want once a week, um, I'll send you out um, uh, a synopsis of all the videos that are coming out and you know a few words every day from sort of encouragement and that kind of thing. So until next time, uh, I'm Kevin O'Hara for AlcoholMastery.com. Take care of yourself, onwards and upwards.